更讨厌。
You don't need your other windows, right? Can I close them? So on YouTube, no sound. No sound. Thank you. 
Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, parents, Suki, and guardians who have joined us here at Assumption English School. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me clearly. Good afternoon, parents, Suki, and guardians who have joined us here at Assumption English School. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me clearly. My apologies, uh, we are facing a little bit of a technical difficulty in terms of the sound. So do give us a couple of uh, minutes to handle the sound situation. And then uh, we hope to get back to your life very soon. Thank you. At the same time, you can see now on the screen, okay, we have a QR code on your screen now. Um, should you have any questions, um, please scan the QR code and then uh, we will be able to answer your questions later during the live uh, segment section that we have. So please, in the meantime, while waiting for us um, just to settle the sound issue, um, please scan the QR code and we will address the questions that you have for us later. Thank you. A very good afternoon. Welcome to Assumption English School's virtual open house. My name is Eileen, um, or Miss Faye, as the students would call me, and I'm the head of the Department for English. We will be starting very soon. So before we begin, 
here's a schedule for today's session. So if you can take a look at your screen now, you will be able to see the schedule for our open house today. There's also a Google Form link for you to ask us any questions that we hope to answer during the live Q&A segment later. Before we begin, many of you have actually asked us questions on our full subject-based banding, which are also our mixed form classes. So we thought before we start, we'll let you, we'll let our sec ones share their experience with you. So please enjoy the next video.
um, I hope you enjoyed the video. All right. Um, for parents who just join us, okay, and those who just join us, we apologize for the sound difficulty um, on the video itself. Okay. Um, but it's a little bit of Murphy's Law. Everything that can go wrong can go wrong with the sound today. But we do hope that at a, we can still answer uh, any questions that you have for the school. And uh, the next segment, I would like to invite our principal, Mr. Benjamin Kwok, who will share with us a little bit more about the school. So I'll hand over the time to Mr. Kwok. Mr. Kwok, please. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, uh, parents uh, and students. Uh, the P6 students just received your results. Uh, a warm welcome to Assumption English. And uh, sorry for the technical issues that we faced earlier on. Uh, you probably could see the video. All right, but you can't hear the sound. I, for one, can't hear the sound as well. But hopefully you can see the faces of our SEC1 students. Uh, they were just like you, uh, P6 only last year. So it's been one year for them and you could see the enthusiasm and the happy faces actually, all right, in, in the students. So hopefully we can uh, rectify the issue of the video. Uh, we're going to have another two more sessions tomorrow, followed by Saturday as well. Hopefully we can get all the technical issues uh, all sorted out. Uh. Okay, this afternoon you, you'll hear me speaking. And uh, you will also hear my VP, Miss Wong, later on uh, uh, in the presentation as well. But this afternoon, together with uh, myself and my VP, there's another VP admin, Mr. Quack. Uh, he's around. And uh, just now you saw my HOD English, uh, Miss Fei. And together with her, actually, I have Mr. Tang, my key person in charge of uh, IT. And uh, later on, uh, you will also hear uh the strong support from my parent support group uh, all right they are miss lenny Chu, miss christine and miss lily tay uh hopefully they'll say something afterwards uh, they must say something afterwards uh, and if you have any question you can also post it to them as well uh you can hear it from the parents point of view and of course we have our alumni and students right miss uh lopinzia juliana and arena as well okay you'll hear from them Okay, so first slide, uh, do you know that Assumption English School is the only co-ed Catholic secondary school in the West? So we are looking for a mission school, a Catholic school. Uh, we are the only co-ed school all right, in the West. Now you may be asking, you know, why? what's the difference between a mission school and a typical uh, government school? Uh, you may be asking, uh, what's the difference? Uh, I just want to share, actually my previous school, I was a principal of a, a government school. Of course, right now I'm in my fourth year in Assumption English School. So uh, really, if, as I reflect back, uh, what's the difference? Actually, the difference would be this. Uh, in a mission school, in a, a Catholic mission school in this particular instance, uh, the learning of character and values, uh, the learning of character and values actually come very naturally. Because indeed the school is founded based on a particular religion. In this particular case, uh, the Catholic faith. Uh, it, it comes very natural in terms of the character, values, education. Because really, uh, in all faiths, uh, in all religion, uh, we really we, it's really teaching about all of us to be better human beings, to be better human beings. And really, in all religion, it teaches us to be good, good values as well. And these are all very universal. So indeed, in a mission school, that space uh, where we have conversation about religion it comes very naturally. And, and because of the faith, the teaching about good character and values as well, uh, it comes very naturally as well. And because we're a Catholic school, we respect all religion and we have that common space as well, all right, to talk about all other religion also. So it comes, as I said again, very naturally. And really, if we talk about this, uh, it's really very good for the child uh, to be exposed to all this, uh, to be aware and be respectful to all faith and religion. And really, uh, if you think about it even further, it is good for their well-being as well. Because we teach them not only just about uh, their personal self, but also about teaching, uh, about serving others. And that's very important about serving others. And because when they think, when the focus is on others, less of self, 
then their own personal problem become lesser actually, less important actually. And therefore their well-being actually it, it improves, uh, it gets better actually. Yeah. Next slide. So a little bit about our school history and legacy. Okay, we were founded in 1953, all right, by the Montford Brothers of St. Gabriel, all right, a particular order, all right, from France, from France. And uh, initially, we were known as Boys Town English School, all right, Boys Town English School. But in 1973, there was a merger, all right, with another mission school, all right, CHIJ Bukit Tima, and we became co-ed after that. It became a co-ed Catholic mission school in 1973. Now, because of uh, we had girls right now, and uh, therefore there was a change of name, all right, and we were renamed Assumption English School. Now, Assumption is because in honor of Mother Mary, right, we believe uh, as a Catholic, right, uh, Mother, Mary, uh, Mother of Jesus, right, whom we believe uh, was raised up to heaven, body and soul. All right, the Assumption of Mary. So the name Assumption English School is in honor of Mother Mary. And, and why is it in honor of Mother Mary? And I mentioned earlier on, because the Montford Brothers of St. Gabriel, they have this special devotion all right, to Mother Mary. And that's the reason why. And so today, uh, we continue with this legacy. All right, we're known as uh, Assumption English School to develop young men and women of character in the service of God and the community. So it's always in the service of God and the community. All right. And, and this is something that we always practice. All right. Always remembering about the last, the lost, and the least in society. So currently, uh, uh, next slide. Where we are right now, uh, in terms of our current venue, uh, we actually relocate back in 2016. So we were away in Queensway for about three years for upgrading of the school facilities and building. So what you see right now, uh, where we are right now, actually we are uh, having quite a, a modern school building. All right. We returned back, like what I said earlier on, in 2016. So the, the facilities are still relatively new, very modern. All right. If you had a chance to pop by, in fact, uh, this morning, uh, this morning I had two parents who just popped by. All right. Although we do not have a, a open house. Uh, in fact, right now we are having a virtual version uh, of an open house. Uh, but we do, uh, you know, uh, welcome uh, visitors. Like this morning, I had two uh, set of parents who came by just to have a physical sense of the school. Uh, have a look at the facilities, you know. Uh, there is no uh, structured formal program, uh, but if you are vaccinated, uh, you're most welcome to come and pop by and have a look at the school. Indeed, a beautiful school. In fact, this morning when the parents came by, I said, wow, didn't know the school inside is so beautiful. And then compared uh, our school with the elder daughter, who's in another school, you say, wow, actually much more beautiful than my elder daughter's school. So I had a bit of a laugh. All right. So indeed for us, uh, if you come by, uh, it, it, we are situated in a large compound. And in this large compound, sometimes people get a bit confused. We call it the Boys Town Community. So on the side, which is closest to Upper Bukit Timah Road, that's where we, where we are, Assumption English School. So we have our own school building. I'm the principal. I have my own staff. All right. And we have our own curriculum as well. So we function as a typical secondary school offering the GCE O levels as well as the N levels. All right. So we follow the MOE curriculum and so forth. All right. The other institution, which is in the same compound as well, but nearer to Cashew Road, nearer to Cashew Road, is the Assumption Pathway School. We share the same name, Assumption, all right? But the curriculum is different. They have their own principal, their own staff, their own separate building as well. And then the curriculum is different because their curriculum is more vocational, hands-on applied curriculum. So they learn things like the students over there, uh, after their PSLE, they are found to be more suitable, uh, suited for a hands-on curriculum. So they learn things like cooking, hairdressing, all right, and, and uh, retail, uh, and so forth. So that's their curriculum. So sometimes people get a bit confused, huh? but I just want to stress again, uh, it is indeed 
different. All right, and they are situated nearer to uh, Cashew Road. Now, of course, we have the Boys Town boarding home right at the top of the compound. All right, they look after boys uh, who may come from difficult home backgrounds or they are orphans. Of course, when Singapore was developing uh, way back, you know, uh, post World War, uh, and and times were challenging in Singapore. All right, of course, Boys Town would received uh, more orphans and so forth. Huh? But right now, things are definitely better, and we do receive. Uh, some boys from the Boys Town boarding home each year we will take in about two or three of them and they indeed add to the diversity uh, of the school uh, environment and, and they are very nice boys well taken care of as well all right so this is indeed the Boys Town community all right consists of Assumption English School, Assumption Parkway and Boys Town each have their own facilities and building each have their own staff their own leaders as well, all right, and it's really a beautiful compound. Uh, in fact, in the morning, uh, it's actually our, our area is very close to nature actually, and the air is so fresh in the morning, very different from many other schools, all right. Next slide. So uh, just to let you all know about some of the affiliation uh, that we have, so uh, if you're looking at uh, which are the junior college that's affiliated to us, uh, especially for parents and students who are thinking about the A-levels junior college route, uh, just to let you know that Catholic Junior College is affiliated to us, it would mean that if you qualify for JC, you will receive two bonus points if you choose CJC as your first choice school. All right. Uh, so that's quite a good advantage. Uh. Although uh, when a lot of our students leave us, uh, they have a whole suite of junior college to choose from. Uh, some choose uh, Hua Chong and JC as well. Uh, but we do realize that quite a number do choose Catholic Junior College as well. Okay. Next slide. So our affiliated school, as mentioned earlier on, uh, one of which is Catholic Junior College. So we have some local schools uh, that's affiliated to us because they all belong to the Monfort Brothers of St. Gabriel's, schools under this particular order. All right, so we have St. Gabriel's Primary, St. Gabriel's Secondary, Monfort Junior, Monfort Secondary, and of course, Assumption Pathway School as well. So for the six uh, local schools, uh, we have collaboration. All right, so in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a talent uh, contest uh, between the secondary schools, uh, or between Montford Secondary, Assumption Parkway, as well as St. Gabriel Secondary. All right, we have a talent uh, contest as well. And then, we, of course, we have some enrichment program that we share with each other, all right, like coding, all right, and then some uh, fun activities, uh, enrichment fun activities, like a virtual mass escape game where students get to apply their knowledge of mathematics, their knowledge of science, for English as well, as they compete with each other. So that was pretty fun. So these are some of the collaboration that we have. Now, an overseas uh, uh, institution that's affiliated to us, so we do have an international network of schools that's affiliated to us, as mentioned, because the brothers were from France. But one that is uh, quite close to us that Pre-COVID used to visit us and we sometimes visit them as well. Other colleges, the Assumption Colleges from Thailand, in particular, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, and Lampang itself. So apparently, uh, the Assumption College in Chiang Mai is apparently is quite well known in Thailand. Apparently, a lot of the politicians uh, come from Assumption College in Chiang Mai. All right, whether from the government side or from the opposition side, apparently they all came from the Assumption College in Chiang Mai. So after they leave the college, I always uh, laugh to myself, uh, they will start to fight. In school, they're all friends, but after they leave the college, they start to fight. Opposition and government. Apparently, the Thaksin family, the opposition side, uh, yeah, they, they apparently were from uh, Assumption, Chiang Mai. Yeah. Anyway, just uh, some info for everyone. So just to reiterate the point, so we are a network of schools. So local network as well as overseas as well. Next slide. So learning is definitely fun and exciting. All right, fun and exciting. So how fun can it be, you know? All right, so let's have a look. So 
we are one of the 28 pilot schools for subject a uh, full subject based spending all right for full subject based spending so by 2024 just for your information 2024 all secondary school will embark on full subject based spending so currently we are one of the 28 schools that embarks on this so what what happens is this uh, so if let's say if you are in the normal academic stream all right and you score achievement level of five and and lower uh, and lower means five four three two one achievement level all right you are eligible all right to do english language mathematics science and mother tongue okay at the express level at the express level now if you are a normal technical stream and if you score achievement level of six and lower six five four three two one all right you are cheap, eligible to do all right at a higher level as well at the normal academic level in fact we do have some uh, normal technical students who even do certain subjects uh, at the express level as well all right in particular for english language mathematics science and mother tongue at the end of sec one at the end of sec one uh, we do have students who are eligible to do humanities uh, for a uh, subject at a higher level for geography history and literature all right so kindly uh, parents and students you would have known about your PSLE scores all right so indeed if you are eligible all right you are able to access uh, these subjects at a more demanding level so this is pretty interesting all right students are able to stretch themselves a little bit more uh, because of their strength and interest all right uh, let me move on to another part of a uh, full subject based pending structure uh, which is our form classes which is our form classes so because of full subject based pending form classes are structured uh, in a mixed manner so you have students from the express na and nt all right all mixed together in a form class all right in a form class so it adds to the diversity because in real life uh, that's going to be it right uh, you meet people from all diverse backgrounds especially for boys when you move on to national service that's what's going to happen so in in assumption english school that's how our form classes are structured all right the diversity is there it teaches our students to really appreciate and respect all right uh, the diversity of backgrounds all right from students from uh, of all uh, background and indeed uh, it adds to the richness eh? all right so what happened is this for the length uh, for the subjects itself for the subjects itself all right uh, for certain subjects we call it the common subjects like art CCE uh, design and technology food and consumer education music and PE all right they will study together. The streams are all studying together for some of these subjects. However, for subjects like English, mother tongue, mathematics, science, history, geography, and literature, uh, it will still be taught by stream. And they will move on to the teaching group and they will learn by stream. Some of these, uh, uh, those subjects that I've mentioned earlier for English, mother tongue, mathematics, science, history, geography, and literature itself. So these are taught by streams. So there's a bit of a movement, all right? And the students really get to know two set of friends very well, all right? Their form class, as well as their teaching group where they are grouped by stream. So it really adds to the richness and so forth, okay? Okay, next slide. So uh, you would have known by now in secondary school, uh, every student, every student will receive a computer device all right and therefore learning right tapping on the device is going to be very important all right and we call it blended learning so there are some days where, where really the use of device are really critical and and important in fact it's part of the school routine really all right and uh, technology can be used and harnessed for greater effectiveness later on i will i will uh, highlight one particular school program only from assumption english where the use of technology 
is really very important for us. All right. So students are encouraged to collaborate with one another anytime, anywhere. All right. And really learn to be independent and self-directed learning. So that's something to really look forward to uh, uh, from secondary school onwards. Next slide. So this is the program I was mentioning earlier on. We call it the Self-Development Program, SDP for short. So just now I mentioned about, you know, students, let's say, in the normal academic and normal technical stream, and you need to score achievement level of five and better for normal academic and achievement level of six and better for normal technical uh, in order to qualify for full subject-based spending uh, subjects. So the question is, how about students who are non-full SVB students? What happened? So what happened is that uh, we have this program where the resources, uh, where the resources are parked, all right, online, virtually. So for NA students, all right, who have this interest, especially for science and humanities. Uh, in fact, next year we have expanded it. Uh, uh, to include English and mathematics as well. So in total, we have four subjects. So for normal academic students who have the interest to try out or to learn a little bit more about express level subjects for science, humanities, and next year that includes English and mathematics, you may try and do so. All right. So it is really your choice. All right. And there'll be bite-sized tasks given to you to complete. All right. Uh, all the modules in a progressive manner over a period of time. So this applies to the NA students and it also applies to the NT students as well. For NT students who may have an interest to try out some of these subjects, all right, at the NA level. So basically, they get a chance to bridge uh, their current level of understanding at their own stream and compare it and challenge themselves at the higher level. So that, that's uh, what you get the chance to do it. All students, all right, it's up to you. If they choose to go on this SDP program, all right, we will give it to you, let you try it out. So it's a chance for you to be really be independent in your learning. So this is applied to our SEC1, NA and NT students. So the next question is, how about the express students? Okay, express students are not in the full SBB program. But we have designed the SDP to include express students, but only for the SEC2 express students. So what can they look forward to? So for our SEC2 express students uh, next year, all right, they can choose to explore, have a taster for science, as well as additional mathematics uh, uh, for the whole year itself. Same thing, the resources will be parked online for them to try out, to have a better sense of science at the upper secondary level, and of course, additional mathematics at the upper secondary level as well. Because at the upper sec level, science will be differentiated into physics, chemistry, and bio. All right, so based on this SDP program, the resources will be put online, so our sec two express students will get a chance to try out, to learn uh, about physics, chem, bio, as well as additional mathematics at the upper secondary level. So why do we do this? It is of course a choice as well, because many a times at the end of SEC2, uh, students uh, are gonna be streamed and they're gonna be asked to choose their subject combination. So by embarking on this SDP for SEC2 Express students, they get a chance to try it out first in advance and at the end of SEC2, they will realize, oh, uh, which are the areas of interest? All right, and therefore they can make better choices as well. So that's the main purpose. So after this, uh, my vice principal, Ms. Wong, will take over with the presentation. Uh, there, there could be some questions that you'd like to ask and so forth, uh, whether to myself or to my VP or to my key personnel or even to my parents and alumni also. And we are here to answer as best as we can. And then in the event, there are some questions that we uh, need to answer uh, offline, we will do so as well. All right. Thank you.
All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Kuo. Thanks for your sharing. Um, parents and guidance as well as even P6 students were online. We hope um, our principal gave you a little bit of background, a little bit more about our school and what we actually represent. Um, this year, um, all right, before I continue, um, the screen here, you will see a QR code as well as a link on the screen. Please feel free to um, scan the QR code. And if you have any questions for us, uh, we will try our best to answer it during the live uh, Q&A segment later. At the same time, um, for, those of, for those of you who joined us much earlier, and uh, you, we understand that there was a bit of a sound difficulty with the video clip that was played earlier. We will be actually uploading the video clips onto our Instagram account, and you can actually view the video clips there later as well. Um, all right, let's continue. And uh, this is actually the first year that PSLE scoring is based on achievement levels, ALs. And, uh, We've also just introduced, my principal has also just introduced how full subject-based bending uh, works. Um, I will now invite my vice principal, Ms. Wong, to give us a little bit more idea on how the uh, FSBB structure looks like, and she will also give you uh, a bit more information on the different aspects of it. So, Ms. Wong, please. Thank you, Eileen. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Um, on the slides, what you can see is our indicative score range that is um, offered in from AES. All right. So for Express Stream, this is the range, and likewise for NA and NT. Okay. So um, these are the range based on our students' uh, AL achievement. Then we also have uh, questions raised by parents wondering, you know, if let's say um, can parents appeal? All right. Uh, to take on uh, more demanding streams, okay? So in this case, I'm afraid not because it's based on the placement outcome um, by ministry, okay? So if let's say your child is being assigned as an ex uh, NA um, stream, then in this case, you can only choose an NA course, okay? That is in terms of teaching uh, group. Later on, I will elaborate more, okay? Next. Okay, um, there's this interesting uh, way of uh, allocating our classes for full SBB schools. Okay, um, starting this year, all right, all our set one classes, our students are actually allocated by mixed stream. So in this case, our concern is, you know, how are our students being uh, grouped or allocated into classes? Could it be due to their subject? or PSLE results? The answer is no, because in AES, all right, and I believe in many other pilot full SBB schools, we actually allocate the classes, all right, based on a good social mix. That means we take into consideration the race, the gender, the stream, as well as teaching group. Okay, later on, I will elaborate more in terms of teaching group. Uh, as what uh, Mr. Cock has mentioned, for common curriculum, namely uh, the CCE lessons, art lesson, DNT, food and consumers education, music and PE. These are the subjects that I think is best to have all the three streams enjoying the lesson together. Okay, so that they can learn from one another in terms of uh, certain skills base. Because some students, you know, could draw better and they have this music inclination or even physically fitter in terms of picking up sports skills. So we find that with this class allocation, you will benefit all our students within the same class. Okay, next. When it comes to the teaching group, uh, namely the core subjects like English, mother tongue, maths, science, and in secondary schools, there's this introductions of humanity subjects for Express and NA students that will be history, geography, all right? So in this case, our students will be taught by teaching group. So the Express students will be taking mathematics together, uh, likewise for NA and NT. This is to keep to the right pacing so that the students can actually uh, benefit better and be guided accordingly. Okay, next. Um, there is also uh, some in 
pressed by our parents asking about how's our academic performance in AES. So we are happy to share with you our last year's cohort 2020 at the national exams. We have actually performed value added in terms of the outcomes from our express. All right. 40.6% are eligible for JC and 85.5% eligible for poly. Then uh, one good thing to also share is for our students uh, taking pure sciences, our pure science classes, the express students, uh, more than 50% are eligible for JC and 100% of them actually qualified for poly. Okay, then for our SEC 5 normal acad, uh, as high as 84% are eligible for poly courses and for normal ACAD, 70.7% actually articulate to SEC5 joining us uh, for one more year to sit for the O-level exams and for our NT students, 100% of them make it to ITE. All right, so with this, I will end my part and we will move on to the next group. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for sharing that. Uh, all right, if you see my screen now, okay, I'd like to welcome um, um, our parent support group, parents who just joined us. Thank you so much. Uh, with me live on the screen, I have Ms. Lenny Chu. Yeah, Ms. Chu, would you like to just wave? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I also have with me Ms. Christine. Ms. Christine, could you just wave as well? Yeah, thank you. And I have Ms. Lily Tay as well. Yeah. So, um, hi, hello, hi, good afternoon. Um, we're very thankful to have uh, parents, okay, who are very supportive and they work with the school very closely um, for the education of our students together. So, um, perhaps maybe we'll start off with our very first question, okay, which um, any one of you can take up. Perhaps um, we have a question that asks, uh, how, how is AES like as a school? So, uh, maybe I'll uh, take this question if it's okay. Sure, sure. Hey, hi, hi uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lily and my son he is uh, with AES for two years, moving on to set three next year. So I think as a parent, right, how, how I feel about like AES, the school culture, all those stuff, right? I, I think uh, most, most importantly, I, I think um, um, AES is a school whereby the school leaders, the teachers actually work very hard with the students as well as with parents like us. Sometimes we do like provide feedbacks and the school actually listens to our feedback and we try to like see how can we like improve on the overall environment for the, for the students as well as uh, um, for the school as a whole. And I, I think uh, another, point, uh, another point that maybe I would like to like share with everybody is probably like during the COVID, COVID lockdown last year. That was when my son first joined AES um, last year. Last year, I first joined AES with the COVID lockdown. So, so uh, when the school re uh, reopened, right, the, the school actually uh, uh, um, bought some, I think if I'm not wrong, some ice cream for the kids to welcome them back to the school. So, so we were like presently surprised with these little tricks from the school to welcome them back after a long break. So, so, so I, I, I would think that in terms of like, in terms of like uh, um, the leaders and the schools, right? They, they really like cares about the students and they are willing to like take the extra miles and make extra efforts to uh, help the students as well as like for parents like us. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for, Thanks. thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Um, um, anyone, uh, any other parent would like to just chip in and share or you can answer a question. Yeah, from one of the parents as well. Um, so what's the school culture like at AES? Yeah. Um, maybe true. I go. Um, yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, maybe can sure. go. <laughs> okay, so uh, actually I'm very happy to have made friends with uh, Lily and Christine. I think our kids all came into AES in the same year and we've actually made quite a lot of good friends among the parents. And I think the common um, comment that we got from the, the, uh, the parents uh, is that our kids are all very happy in this school and we are very happy that we have actually made the right choice to bring our kids, uh, to put our kids in this school. My daughter in particular, she's, you know, even if um, the school during COVID where actually they are quite flexible, they say, you know, after exam, you actually have the flexibility if you choose to come to school, but they need a letter from the parents or you can choose not to come to school. 
And even though she doesn't have to go to school, she would still insist she wants to go to school because she really like going to school. And also in terms of the teaching culture, going back to the academic support, uh, I'm actually very happy that when I go through my daughter's file, for example, I actually see that um, there are a lot of worksheets given to them. So for example, for the science, after every single chapter, there will be a worksheet given to them to actually practice and reinforce what the teacher has taught. I think that is very good. And I don't see um, in the other school where my other kids go to. And also before exam, there will also be, uh, you know, exam papers, past year papers given to them to practice. And when I need to reach out to the teachers, uh, for quite a few teachers, I actually have their WhatsApp. I can just WhatsApp them and, you know, as and when they are free, they will reply me and they are usually very responsive. So I'm really grateful and thankful for the uh, school support. Christine? Yeah, uh, I think I have uh, the same uh, sentiments as uh, Lily and Lenny. Uh, We're so glad that uh, my daughter currently, uh, SEC2, going to SEC3 next year is, um, is actually uh, very happy in AES. Uh, uh, yeah, she enjoys the school, she enjoys the friends, she loves the teachers. Uh, she has always been sharing with me that the teachers are all very understanding, like friends to them, so uh, very caring. So I think this is very important uh, for their growing up. Because sometimes as a busy parents, uh, uh, we, we might neglect some of their uh, needs and concerns, but uh, they, they know that they, they can uh, approach the teacher for, for some of those uh, advices. So I'm very glad uh, to the teachers, the form teachers especially, uh, other than that, um, the school's culture uh, has always been a very godly culture. I find that they are very understanding. They hear every one of us, our concerns out, and they really take into consideration of our our points and um, uh, our concerns. So I'm really glad, uh, especially for uh, Mr. Ko, uh, the VPs, uh, for all, all the consideration and all the understanding. Uh, they really, really understand we parents. So. Yeah, thank you. This is a good school, a great school, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, um, Ms. Chu, Ms. Christine, Ms. Lily for actually sharing with us, really appreciate it. And it's also very nice to see that parents, you know, uh, who come in, um, as what Ms. Lenny Chu has said earlier as well, they've made friends <laughs> as a PSG support group, which is really nice to see that kind of a camaraderie definitely being built, um, both from the student level as well as at the parents' level as well. Perhaps, may I just take one more question from the parents for any one of you? So, um, what was the deciding factor for you um, to choose AES for your child back then uh, after PSLE? I think this will be a question that a lot of parents will be keen to know. Like, what pushed you to, you know, select AES finally, finally as your choice? Okay, maybe, maybe again I go first. <laughs> uh, I, I think um, 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 back then, right, I don't think there's like many informations on the internet, on the website, whereby we'll be able to like get informations on AES and probably like some of those, those informations that we managed to like get from the website, probably like they are all like some ne negative feedbacks and they are quite dated. So maybe like for my case, how, how do I decide that AES should be the school that my sons will be going to? So they are a few factors. I think the key factors is really like on his PSLE results and what are the options that is given to him. So based on the PSLE result, now after getting the PSLE results, right, we actually went down to the school for the open house. And we are actually uh, very impressed with the open house because when we were there, even like the, I think the open house starts at around nine o'clock and we actually went to the school much earlier at eight plus when the school is still trying to like prepare themselves for the open house. But uh, um, the school still welcome us. And I think the principal, Mr. Ko, is actually at the entrance to the welcome us as well. And they actually like um, gets the set one students to bring us around the school to share with us their experience. So after we visited the schools right we like the schools and we can feel that even like for the set one students right they are given opportunities to um to interact with parents during such open house and we can feel that they are actually very well they are well articulate they can 
they are able to like tell us, oh, where is this place? Uh, why is it that we like the schools or those stuff? So they actually share with us their experience. So based on the experience from those students, then of course, um, AES is very near to the downtown line. So location wise, it's very important, especially for students who need to like travel from from different parts of Singapore. Right. So it's really very near to the to the MRT. And I think and there's another point uh, which I'm also um, uh, there's another point which I think uh, I would like to share with everybody is like when we go to AES, right, we realize that there's also quite a number of international students. You have students from Japan, from Korea. So we thought like that is AES is like a little international school but in a Singapore government uh, aided school environment. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I'll uh, let the, the other two <laughs> carry on. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, with uh, uh, Ms. Chu, um, um, Ms. Christine, yeah. like to add on to anything? So, yeah. Yep. Actually, in terms of distance, we, we stay very far away. We are actually at the other end of Singapore. Uh, but as what Lily mentioned, the MRT is really very convenient because the casual MRT station is just at the doorstep. So even from the east, uh, we hop onto a train, you know, within uh, less than an hour, we are actually at the school. And there's also a covered walkway that brings the student uh, all the way to the school. Okay, so uh, distance aside, I think what attracted us was that actually I went to the open house opposite of um, Lily. We actually went at the end of the day and we actually rushed down because we went to a few other schools to visit. And it was almost at closing time. And we ran into Mr. Kwok as well. He was still standing there, you know, from the beginning to the end. He was standing there together with the HOD and he spoke to us and, and the students who were there, they brought us around. We were impressed with the with the way, you know, they, 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 they talked to us. We were impressed by the parents. We were impressed by the, the school compound. You know, it's, it's very nice as, um, you know, many of us have mentioned today and, uh, and we were sold. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, really appreciate um, all your sharing here today. And thank you for joining us today, um, Ms. Chu, okay, Ms. Christine, as well as Ms. Lily. Um, due to time constraint, we'll move on to the next segment with, uh, for, with our students. So, but once again, thank you for joining us. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Thank you. Mm, all right. Um, before we move on to the next segment, once again, for all parents, okay, or guardians, or even primary school six students, okay, who are joining us for this session, if you have any questions at all for the school, um, please scan the QR code or click on the link, and we'll try to answer your questions later during the live Q and A session. Um, we will now move on to the next segment together with our students, our alumni. So we will have two young ladies joining us today, uh, one of whom is a student leader, Ping Jia, as well as Jelena, who's a fresh graduate uh, from the SEC4 level, and our, our dance president, actually. Our vice president, uh, vice, sorry, vice president, vice principal, <laughs> Ms. Wong, will also be joining us online. So you can see that we have Ping Jia. Hi, Ping Jia. Hi, Jelena. Hi. Hello. And uh, together with Ms. Wong and myself, yeah. So perhaps we'll just kick start, okay, to say, could you just share with us, Pintia and Angelina, a little bit about your CCA experiences? I think that'll be good. Thank you. Um, so for me, right, when I was in two years, I think two years ago, I was in basketball as well as I was in student council. So in student council, I actually got a chance to plan uh, various different events ranging from youth day to teacher's day. So definitely one of my greatest memories was planning youth day. I actually got to oversee and we got to bring in uh, uh, different elements into it. For example, we actually shared always awareness on uh, uh, people with disabilities. So that was something very meaningful to me. And that was something that I really uh, appreciated my experiences from Assumption English. Thanks for that, Pintia. Thank you so much. Jelena, so would you like to share about your journey as our vice president? Uh, personally, I really fell in love with the CCA. Um, the people in AES are actually very a very welcoming group of people. Um, it may you may seem like, because in my personal experience, people are very nervous to talk to each other, because uh, some some of them have like social anxieties or, yeah. But the CCA really helped um, help us to step out of our comfort zone to try and learn new things, as well as just make new friends in general. It really helped us to be a better person as it helped us to 
um, sorry, I'm very nervous, <laughs> uh, to like expand our personality traits. Uh, we really learned a lot from each other as well as helping people out of the CCA as well, and as well as becoming closer with the teachers as well. Thank you. Thanks, Jelena. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing, Pintia and Jelena, and for joining us. Uh, at the same time, uh, do you have anything else to share about with the live audience here? Parents and anything? Pintia and uh, Jelena? If not, I'll get Ms. Wong. Okay. <laughs> I'll get Ms. Wong to share with us a, a few questions that we have um, from parents via the, the link as well. Uh, Ms. Wong, um, how was the curriculum load like? Uh, in the school. Yes. Hi. Well, Sorry, I hi. this is a. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I guess this is a common question because from primary six, four subjects with a big jump to nine to 10 subjects in terms of time management and workload will be generally a concern. So as early as in sec one, we do teach our students in terms of the organization skills and also the time management. In fact, later, later the two ladies can share their part in terms of their experience. You know, how was it like? Can you still recall when you were in SEC 1? <laughs> you know, how you manage your time. Within the class, we do have a curriculum rep or subject rep rather, who actually keep track on the assignments given. And of course, most of our teachers in for all subjects, they need not have the lesson consecutively over the days. Sometimes after a day or so, they will have the next lesson. So that will generally be the deadline for the submission of assignments. So it's well paced. Um, the workload is also guided by this homework policy that we have in AES. Okay, so um, it will be manageable. Um, what is important is the students should not wait until last minute. Okay, so having said that, we have all this policy that guides us, but what is important is our learners. So our two ladies, maybe you can share your perspective in how you manage. Yes, who would like to share? I'll go first. Yeah. Uh, okay. Personally, when I first, it was announced that I became the dance uh, president, it was a struggle at first because it was a new feeling having to deal with um, my ex coes in dances being the, pres the dance president as well as dealing with um, the school activities. And it was sec three as well. So a lot of things were coming my way, new experiences as well. But I found that um, having help from the teachers and the ex schools really helped me a lot in general. Uh, they provided a lot of help by when I needed um, questions, when I wanted to ask questions, they would just be right there. They were very open about students um, asking questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wong, and thank you, Jill and Ping Jia, um, for um, sharing with us so candidly about how you felt about the curriculum load and uh, managing it at the secondary one level. Um, we will now, thank you so much. So uh, for now, we'll move on to the last segment, which is our Q&A segment for the day. So thank you, ladies. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Um, we now have um, our principal, Mr. Kwok, who will be joining us online again for the Q&A segment. So, um, just give us a moment to connect Mr. Kwok online as well. All yeah, right. Hello. Yeah. Just, just want to say something about the curriculum load. Uh, indeed, uh, moving from primary school to secondary, the load definitely is heavy. Uh, you know, lessons will continue all the way until about almost 2.20 as well. All right. So definitely in terms of time, it, it is, it's, it's long. And then uh, added that you have uh, CCAs as well. In primary school, it's optional, uh, but in secondary school, it's compulsory. You must have a CCA. So that adds on to the load. But however, I think we are all mindful. And uh, if you look at the, the uh, curriculum itself, uh, there is, there's no mid-year exams also. 
all right, at SEC 1. So that's something uh, to ease the students in uh, into secondary school. Uh. So, so, but not to worry, uh, we'll take one little step at a time, all right, to help uh, the child to adapt to secondary school. In fact, for certain subjects, they, I think they'll find it easier at the beginning. Uh, and maybe for uh, maybe mathematics, uh, could be one subject, they'll find it slightly easier at the start. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kwok. Um, we do have another question from parents. Okay, and the question is, what is the learning support for students with learning difficulties? And um, how many allied educators do you have in your school um, to help out with um, students with learning difficulties? Mr. Kwok or Ms. Wong, please. Okay. Uh, yeah. In AES, we have a total of uh, five AEDs, of which one is for teaching and learning. She assisted with the FCE, which is the food and nutrition, the home ec, all right, in terms of cooking. Um, then on top of it, we have two counsellors and one student welfare officers and this uh, AED for learning behavioural uh, assistance. So in total, there are five that support our students in their learning. Okay, And if there's any concern about students with learning difficulties, um, when school reopen, sometimes the, the parents can actually give our form teachers a call or actually email us and we can actually take note of it. And if there's a need, our AD uh, LBS, which is the Learning Behavioural Support uh, Officers, will actually keep in touch with the parents and then we can actually uh, look into the needs of the students. And in AES, we do have a few cases where we have uh, meetings with the parents so that we can kind of uh, define and craft up certain support structures to assist these students with high uh, educational needs. But in general, uh, most of our students are able to manage with the support where our form teachers as well as AD check in on them regularly. Mm. So uh, uh, parents, you. if you have any concern, you can call the school. Just to add on as well, uh, we also have uh, teachers who are trained to give the additional support as well. Uh, so we have a committee that looks into uh, students that need uh, the additional help. And uh, sometimes uh, based on needs basis as well, uh, we will meet up uh, with school leaders uh, to discuss the case so that we can customise a program or customize the support uh, to be given uh, to the child. So sometimes we do uh, quite a bit to support the child, even the location of the classroom as well. Sometimes we will look into uh, the classroom location to best support the child's uh, learning needs also. So these are some of the things that we will do. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kwok, and thank you, Ms. Wong. We have another question here with regards to the placement uh, for a score of AL22, what are the chances of getting to the express stream in AES? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, this is our first year implementing. Oh, Mr. Kok, you would like to take this? Yeah, this, this is the first time that the system is uh, in place, so we are not too sure as well. But for us, uh, our range is from 10 to 22 for express. At the same time, we also know that for uh, scores of 21 uh, to 22, uh, these are the ones where parents and child can make a choice because you likely will be given a normal academic stroke uh, express. So you are able to make a choice in that sense. Uh, but currently, based on uh, MOE's uh, 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 guidelines uh, for our school, uh, express is between 10 to 22. But I want to say this, in the event you feel that uh, Assumption English is the school for you, for your child, or maybe uh, a student, uh, you feel that you like Assumption English, uh, then you should put us as the first choice. Uh, because uh, the choice that you make, uh, first or second or third, uh, it plays a significant role uh, in terms of placement. I think your primary school would have uh, briefed you on this matter as well. But we say this, uh, uh, you know, uh, you probably be going around to a few uh, virtual open house, you know, and you will hear from the principal, the vice principal, the teachers as well. Uh, and after that, you know, make a, a choice from there. But like what I said earlier on, you know, this morning uh, we actually received 
two sets of parents who actually came by. And if you really want to be sure and you feel like, oh, I feel like visiting and really indeed you are vaccinated, right? Uh, yeah, you can just pop by. There's no formal program uh, going on. There's no formal uh, open house, but you can come in and stroll around and have a look. And, and if you are around, uh, we can have a quick chat with you. Uh, it's perfectly all right. Yeah. Uh, Miss Wong? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Miss Wong, you want right. to say something? Mm. Uh, I think um, Mr. Kwa has answered that. Yes. I think there are a few other questions, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, another question. Sorry, very quick one. How many express and NA classes are there? And how many students are there in each class? Mm. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this year we have three express classes, two normal acad and one normal technical. And um, based on what MOE has shared, and we do know there are a few number of schools merger. So as a result, more schools will be given more classes allocated. So for the next year, tentatively, we are likely to have probably four classes of Express. Let's hope, huh? four classes of Express, two normal acad and one NT. It's still uncertain because it's subject to students' option and the availability. All right. Um, well, in terms of uh, how big is the class enrollment in general we have a very comfortable uh, class size ranging about 35 on average but of course when it comes to teaching group there will be a slightly different stories because we take into consideration the subject uh, school-based spending that means i have students taking na joining the express class so that number will still be kept to 40. Uh, i just want to add that <laughs> Just want to add that, uh, yeah, like what Ms. Wong mentioned about the merger schools, uh, because there are quite a few schools around here that's being merged. Uh, so therefore, in terms of the enrollment, uh, we are looking at a slightly increased uh, uh, enrollment. I just want to assure parents that Assumption English uh, will not be merged. Uh, so there will be stability. So I, I dare confidently say that looking ahead, uh, I will not project more than beyond 10 years. If you look at the next 10 years, right, we will not be much. We are actually very comfortable. We are very relevant as well. And I will, we will not be much and, and really we are still able to contribute to the educational journey of students. And if we are not relevant, and you know, then MOV will not put us as one of the pilot schools for full SVB as well. In fact, we are pilot schools for quite a lot of things. Uh, and uh, and if you look at it, uh, the recent newspaper, all right, announcement, this one is not in the area of academic, and uh, this one is the area of sports. Uh, uh, you would have read about the announcement by the Football Association of Singapore. All right. And there's going to be 10 pilot schools uh, to be a school football academy. And we are one of the schools. All right. In the west side, we are, uh, there's only two schools and we are one of the two schools as well. So for parents, if, if your children are very interested in football, hey, we are the school to come to. Thank you, Mr. Kwok, and thank you, Mr. Wong. Uh, Ms. Wong, sorry. Um, we have <laughs> one last um, relevant question, okay, quite relevant question um, that will answer for, for, from parents. How, how academic-centric is AES? Um, and this is because the parent says that holistic learning is important for him or her. And their question would be, how much emphasis does our school allocate between academic as well as getting results in the school? Mm. Mm. It's all your success. So, ah, all right. Um, well, uh, we look at the different uh, aspects in developing our students. So in terms of curriculum, during the curriculum time, there will be relevant or uh, necessary support given. For example, students who are weaker in certain subjects, there will be booster programs. And generally, we are focusing on small group uh, coaching and teaching is subject to needs. All right. And then next, when it comes to uh, core curriculum, for example, like in CCAs, then in AES, we have two uh, assigned date all right, which is on Tuesday and Thursday, where the students will have their afternoons for CCAs. 
And of course, in addition, there are some CCAs who require additional practices, then they will have it probably on a Fridays. All right. Um, in terms of uh, the religious wise for Catholic, uh, we do have uh, this uh, Faith Alive on Fridays, which uh, later on, maybe, you know, Mr. Kwok can help to share about this uh, Catholic uh, religions uh, learning on Fridays for an hour for our lower sex students. Okay. Um, in terms of well-being, okay, uh, we have also opportunities for the students to tap on the blended learning uh, cur curriculum for them to uh, look into student-initiated projects on top of uh, what our ALP or LLP uh, have actually uh, taught them or require them to do a uh, community service. We do have students who have this uh, great interest in it. Then they have this uh, student-initiated uh, projects that they will take up and actually uh, invite their classmates to join them for a good cause. Yep. So, so I, I just want to add that indeed, uh, you know, as parents, uh, we want to uh, put our child in a school where there is that balance uh, uh, between, uh, you know, the academic uh, part of it as well as the character development part of it. And indeed, both are important. Uh, if we were to say that uh, uh, the academic part of it uh, is not important, then uh, uh, I think we are being unfair to the child. So uh, earlier on, I think my VP, uh, Ms. Wong, also mentioned about the, the percentages of students uh, moving on to post-secondary education. All right. And indeed, how students uh, move on to post-secondary education uh, is based on merit as well. Right, it is based on results, you know, based on the CCAs and so forth. So as a school, we prepare our students as best as we can. All right. But at the same time, we also see uh, the readiness of the child also, because we need the child to be ready, all right, to be motivated also. But I want to assure parents that uh, uh, we will not, uh, the academic part of it is important, but it is a very balanced approach. Uh, where we see children are able to stretch themselves, we will do so. For kids who need that additional attention, the additional time and space, uh, we will also give it to them. So earlier on, when I mentioned about the SDP program, all right, the self-development program, that's one of it. If, if your child chooses to be on this program, uh, then they'll be stretched in their own time and own pace. All right. If they do decide they don't need this program, it is perfectly fine. Uh, and it is because of this also we, we try to prepare our students uh, as best as we can for post-secondary education through the DSA as well as EAE as well in terms of building up their portfolio. Because we believe that every child when they leave us, they, be, they should be studying something that they are interested in. And it starts from secondary school. Now, when it comes to character values education, like what I said earlier on, it comes very naturally to a typical mission school, not just our school. Lah. Every uh, typical mission school, uh, whether it is uh, of the Christian faith or Buddhist faith and so forth, right, it comes very naturally because all religion teaches us uh, to be good. And really, uh, uh, character and values education come very strongly because uh, our founding saint, Saint Louis Marie de Montfort, uh, he's really like our superhero. He's really like our super, superhero, you know, and what he says means a lot to us. And one of which we, should, we always tell our students is, those whom the world rejects must move you the most. Those whom the world rejects must move you the most for our teachers and for our students as well. Because it teaches us to be inclusive, to be there for others, especially for the last, the lost, and the least. So this is what we teach in our students and we apply it also, all right, in, in our VIAs, in our CCAs and so forth. So indeed, the whole package is important. Uh, this whole holistic development of our children is important. And if you come to Assumption English School, uh, you can be assured that your child will be developed uh, holistically. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kwok, Ms. Ms. Wong. Thank you for being with us and answering the questions uh, from the parents. Um, we actually have quite a number of questions um, 
a, a list of them actually that we're not able to take them all at once now. So what we will do is that we will actually put up um, some of the FAQs up on our Instagram page as well as um, for those of you who have actually registered your email with us, we will actually send um, you the, the answers to some of your questions via email as well. But um, in any case, you may reach out to us via our Instagram account, which is AES Mana, okay, which is just AES Mana. Um, the parent support group as well, they are also keen uh, to have you joining them or following them on Instagram. They are uh, simply Assumption English School uh, PSG. So, you know, if you do want to reach out to our PSG as well to hear a bit more from a parent's perspective, or to simply follow our school's Instagram page where you can connect with us, ask us questions, and uh, we will also field the questions that you have actually asked uh, on our IG page. Um, right now, if, we would uh, like you to... Uh, yeah, sorry, Ms. Gop, yes. Uh, they can, if they uh, can't find the Instagram account, they can just go to our school website. The links are all there as well. Yes. Thank you. Yes, um, please um, feel free to also serve our school website. You can find all the relevant links there. And if all else fails, give us a call, okay? And we will definitely be able to help you out in any way that we can. Um, the last slide now that we have, we'll just like you to, thank you for joining us today. And we'll just like you to actually um, scan the QR code uh, in order to give us a bit of feedback on the open house. We do apologize once again for the technical difficulties with regards to the video clips. Uh, we, won we had some sound difficulty. We're not able to play the video with the sound. But uh, as I mentioned, we will actually um, uh, upload all the video clips uh, that you can watch on our Instagram account so that uh, you have access to them. Uh, in the meantime, do give us your feedback. And uh, we will be ending off this entire session with a short video clip. Uh, like I said, if we are, if the sound system persists, we do apologize for it. Um, but do enjoy the clip, and then uh, we will upload it on our IG account so that you can still view it. Thank you. Thank you so much. team actually trains on this very field each week. Yes, because of our field, we have enjoyed many activities here as a school. Do you remember last year? We had water soccer, 
and the Assumptionites challenge that ended off with the slide down the inflatable castle. Yeah, I had so much fun with my classmates splashing around. Remember when our teacher joined us in the Assumptionite challenge as well? Great bonding time with them too. And of course, besides the school activities, our soccer and softball CCA sessions are also conducted here. Also offered judo as a CCA. And we even have a special room called the dojo for the judokas to train in. A very long road from the same thing. Our training may be tough, but that's what makes us little class holders more stronger. Appreciate how we would cheer one another up when some parts of the training seem difficult. That often gives me the motivation to continue pushing on. So let's take a look at how we train. Let's go, Chelsea! Sure, we will. We'll catch up with you later. Bye-bye. Sure.